The buzz around town suggests that folk are looking for info surrounding some stinger-having, honey-producing, and flower-pollinating companions, and I am here to do just that. But forgive me, as I did go digging through the comments and name drop the individuals who planted the sweet taste and thought in my head, but I just could not find your names, however. Whoever you are, I am doing this for you regardless. It's time to talk bees. And they emerge from these beehives. They are naturally occurring and cannot be crafted or renewed. So however many you get via world gen is what you are stuck with. So make note. And any beehive itself spawns a new bee every 30 seconds. But any given hive can only house up to six total sting buggers. But every morning, a single bee will leave the hive followed by another every 50 seconds and so on and so forth. And as you'd imagine, they get to work. Bees actually look to collect the pollen from as many flowers as they can before dusk hits. That's because when it hits, they all go flying home. But the hope is that they get the six different flowers before that happens, because if they do, the honey production is sped up significantly. The problem is though, the beehives only have a hard cap of a measly three honey total. So it appears our bee friends are actually just working with no good return on investment. The solution? Enslaving them ourselves. Bee boxes are made from honeycombs, bees themselves, and two boards. And don't worry, we'll touch on how to get some of these materials soon if you're gonna have trouble in your mind. And bee boxes actually see a rate of a new bee every two minutes, while also dropping in total population down to four per box. But don't worry, these are offset due to the decreased time it takes for each bee to leave the box, it now being 37.5 seconds when compared to the beehives. And, of course, they have an increased production in the honey. But to get set production started, we must continue our journey to manipulate and destroy nature for our own benefit. So please, grab a bug net and start chasing down some butterflies. The amount you'll need depends solely on how efficient you wish your upcoming bee farm to be, so capture a bunch while you're at it. Then, go back to your area where you set up all your bee boxes and begin to actually plant your captured butterflies. Yes, you are somehow transforming a living creature into a plant instantly. But don't question it, it's gonna help you live off honey forever. But remember now, bees must pollinate six separate flowers before dusk in order to produce honey. So make sure again to have a healthy number of flowers about while also having space between them. And if all four bees per box do just that, they're going to easily produce four honey per day, if not more. So you'll soon be having a full production in swing in like a day, maybe a day and a half at the most if things run smoothly. And the boxes themselves only hold up to six, so it's going to be really fast. And by the by, there are four phases to a producing box, as seen here. But you'll reach a full box so often, like I said, that the sight of any of the others is really going to be a rare thing. But it ain't all sunshine and sticky stuff, folks, as collecting the sugary sweetness is not as easy as just asking the bees politely for it, because they will come out and treat you as a threat if you try to take it away. However, there are a couple ways to quote-unquote cheat the system. The simplest of which sees you just waiting until all or most of the bees are outside the box working, and that's really close to dusk time. And doing so, you'll just have every bee ignoring you kinda, and the ones that don't will immediately be going back home very very soon once dusk hits. Alternatively, you can light a box on fire to force the bees to emerge all at once while still maintaining a neutral status between you all. But just make sure to have a fire safety plan at the ready. And as an added bonus, this also just gets the bees themselves to work immediately instead of having to wait for any stupid timer once the morning hits. But of course, if you wish to immerse yourself into the bee having lifestyle, you can always don a beekeeper hat. It's simple to craft and absorbs 80% of damage dealt by bees. So, both harvesting honey or simply just handling the creatures just became a cinch. You may still get stung up the butt, but at least it'll hurt a hell of a lot less. But one final thing to note before we move on. If you remain far from your farm of bees, there is a cheeky little production system that occurs. The boxes will no longer produce at whatever potential rate they could if you were around, but rather all see the production drop to but one honey produced per day no matter what. So honestly, keeping your honey farms closed is advised.
But about the honey itself, seeing as you're about to have an absolute crap ton of it now, is it even worth it? Well, honey alone heals you up for three and fills you up for about nine, so yeah. Honey can and will be a mighty fine day-to-day -day snack for you if you wish. But it goes well beyond that, as but two honey and one papyrus can be smashed together to create Honey Poultice, a survival item that heals for a whopping 30 health at practically no cost to you. It's an amazing healing alternative, maybe even one of the best ones in the game if I'm honest, just simply due to how easy it is to get. Beard loves him some honey mustard with his nuggets, so this next item is a thing of beauty to him. Combining but one honey with some meat and perhaps a little pinch of some other ingredients here and there, you can whip up some honey nuggets yourself. A food item that restores 20 health, nearly 40 hunger, and 5 sanity a pop. Or go the extra mile and make one a heck of a sweet and meaty meal by combining more meat and honey to serve up a honey ham. A food that restores 30 health, 75 hunger, and 5 sanity per munch time. You're going to have so much honey that honey hams might become your new go-to. And honestly, there's really not much that can beat that. Powder cakes certainly can't, but golly are powder cakes still darn useful. By throwing in honey, corn, and some twigs and such, you can walk away with a food item that may not provide any hunger bonuses whatsoever, but holy moly, it boasts a spoilage time of over 12,000 days. This easily makes powder cake the number one choice in terms of bait to use for simple gobbler farms to advanced farm like piggies. Powder cakes for the win. But honey ain't the only thing you're gonna be getting while dealing with the countless hives and their stinging residents. Honeycombs are quite noteworthy as well. Not only are they needed for the construction of bee boxes themselves, they could be an alternative ingredient in taffy, a food item that heals for minus three health, 25 hunger, and 15 sanity. It only takes four of your millions of honey to make taffy as well, so if you struggle with hunger or sanity, this is your fallback. We also have pumpkin cookies, an item that uses honey and pumpkins to make. Duh. It won't negatively or positively impact your health while providing nearly 40 hunger gain and 15 sanity to boot. The limiting factor is without a doubt the pumpkins, but by now you should know about farming specific crop seeds, so there you go. Bake Beardo some cookies, why don't ya? Or better yet, serve him up some ice cream. The recipe may seem a little confusing at the moment because you might be asking, what? There's frickin' milk in this game? Yes. Yes, there is. But for now, know that ice cream boosts hunger by 25, sanity by 50, and even cools you down by 40 degrees over 15 seconds. And yes, you can actually freeze to death by eating ice cream in this game. Oh, and then there's beeswax that is needed to craft a wax paper that ultimately leads to a bundling wrap that comes from defeating the queen of the bees. But since I've covered Bee Queen roughly 700,000 times already, I'm just gonna tell you to go watch all those videos instead. Cause we got some sting in the do. Stingers also drop from bees and can be used in a limited but semi-useful sense, I guess. Like how a stinger combined with a rather interesting combination of other materials can be made into a booster shot. An item that restores your maximum health by 25% each time if you happen to die and respawn via telltale hearts and such. Alternatively, you can also use stingers to construct sleep darts to, well, put various mobs to sleep, I guess. The effects are temporary and all mobs have varying resistances to the sleeping effect so I must say that these are things I don't often use and therefore I cannot really recommend. But to each their own. And even beyond all that, there is still an item that could be crafted with just bees themselves, bee mines. They work exactly as you would imagine. Place one, two, or several down. Lure any of the locals that are giving you any trouble and just watch the swarm go to work. Is it effective? Uh, no, not really. Is it kind of fun and gimmicky? Heck yes. And honestly, I'd use these way more if there was a way to get the bees back into the mines and reused. Some final notes. Killer bees exist and spawn from killer beehives as seen here. They spawn a new killer every 20 seconds and hold six bees again per hive. But killer bees all emerge to target threats when you get close, unlike their normal bee-like counterparts. 
Beehives, be them either killer variants or not, can be easily destroyed by just running bees in a circle and then doubling back to do damage on the structures themselves every now and then. And as for the bees, they are so slow and the range is terrible. So just dancing back and forth until they are darzo is the easiest thing you can do. Keep in mind also that all bees become killer bees come spring, so plan your honey harvesting and even just your exploration accordingly. And yes, have fun in the killer bee fields as well, if you even get one that is. If you do, you may want to bring some friends along to help clear it out. Oh, and one final, final tip for you. If you capture a number of bees from any area and then travel to another a ways away and then release said bees, they will no longer look to return home at dusk as they now have no home to return to. But why is this important? Well, the bees will remain in their same pollinating cycle regardless of where they are, and that can lead to newly formed fields of flowers, even evil flowers. The latter of which is best left to a discussion involving sanity, but know that bees are incredibly versatile and can be manipulated for your pleasure even when they are not part of a hive. But there you have it everyone, a guide on what all the buzz is about and how we can use what makes it to our advantage. Honey farming is essentially one of the most ridiculously efficient farms there is. So please, do yourself a favor and at least try them out. Just don't forget your beekeeper hat and bug net, folks. Thanks for watching everyone, well wishes to all out there, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!